About a week ago, I hosted a competition in Besiege to see who could make the best plane using only 60 different blocks. This really isn't a lot, and some of my more complicated planes can easily push over 2,000 pieces. In this video, I'm going to show you my struggle to make my planes for the contest, as well as testing out some of the other entries to see who really made the best plane. Now starting out, I loaded up the competition map, and you can see I put down a few wood blocks. Now on those, I put down a swivel joint, and my first idea was to try to make an engine-powered plane. Now you can see next, I put down a piston, and I put down a hinge below it. This will allow it to swivel back and forth, and should allow it to attach upright. Trying it out now though, it was wasn't attached to the swivel yet, and in order to do that, I had to add in one more joint. With this though, I was able to brace it together, and you can see now I'm able to extend out the piston and pull it back to rotate the crankshaft. Now this was working pretty well, but keep in mind, I was already using about 10 blocks to make this work. But with this, now I wanted to add on a second piston. I didn't think I was going to have the parts budget to be able to add anything more than that, and even just these blocks was kind of making me nervous. Now after adding on the second piston here, I tried to attach it with some braces, but I was having some minor collision problems that were causing some issues. Now fortunately, I realized I could save a block if I move up the piston a little bit here. That'll make it automatically attach to the swivel joint, and you can see now it's working basically the same way, except they don't need a brace. That was a pretty good optimization, and after taking off a few of the other extra blocks here, I wanted to add the piston to the other side of the crankshaft. The only thing is I will need to link these together somehow, and I wanted to avoid using braces since they have a very high resistance to rotation. With three blocks on here though, I was able to get these together, but I noticed that one of the pistons didn't really seem attached. Now I tried doubling up this mechanism, but it still didn't seem to be attached at all, and I was kind of wondering why. Now easily enough here, just use the brace to hold together for now, and with this, I did have an engine that actually had two pistons. Now pistons are also a very weak source, so I was a little bit worried that they weren't going to be able to actually move around the propellers at a good enough speed. Now I wanted to try that out here, and you can see I started out by using these small propellers. These seem seemed a little underpowered though, so instead I switched to these large ones and I wanted to give this a test. This seemed to be working fine, and I was actually pretty happy to see that the engine didn't slow down all too much. Now I tried tripling up these to get even more power, and this also seemed to be working pretty well. This was a good sign, but I did want to see how it would do once I drop it in the air. Before that though, I also wanted to make this engine run completely on its own, and to do that, you see I added in a sensor block here, and it's just going to be looking at the propellers, and if it ever intersects, it'll switch which piston is pulling in, and that ends up making it rotate. I was pretty happy to see that this thing was running way faster in automatic control than it was when I was manually pressing the key to turn it over. This still wasn't too impressive though, and releasing it in the air here, it did move forward, but not really that fast. One thing I wanted to try doing though was linking the engine together much better using a bunch of braces. Once I had this, you see I'm adding on some legs here and some wheels. This is just temporary, but I wanted to see how the engine was going to do if it was on a car. Now fortunately, this actually seemed to be pretty good here, and the car moved forward relatively fast. That was a good sign, and now I want to delete all the car stuff and start working on the plane. The parts budget, though, was getting very stretched now, and I was a little bit worried I was going to be over. Just having one of these wings in place already had me at 50 parts, and that was getting extremely close to the limit, considering I have no controls on this at all. Releasing in the air, too, while it did move forward, it didn't seem to have enough power, and just fell straight down. Now, I didn't have that many wings on it, so I just spent a bunch more of my parts trying to get some extra surface area, and while this did help a little bit, I still wasn't moving that fast and just fell right into the ground. Now, one thing I was hoping would help is deleting all of the wood blocks and replacing them with ballast. The ballast, like I said, they'd be quite a bit lighter, so shaving off about half of the weight of the plane I thought would make a pretty big difference. Now, I also went ahead next and added a steering hinge into the back with a single wing on it. This will allow me to pitch up and down the plane, and in this test, while it was flying backward, it was surprising surprisingly okay, and it was falling much slower than it was before. It occurred to me around now, though, I was going to need a lot more airspeed on my blades if I wanted to get anywhere. Now, you can see here, I used a couple of ballasts to hold onto those blades, and I pushed them as far out as I could go that was allowed in the rules. The space constraint hasn't been too big of a deal yet, but now I'm completely limited by it, and while trying this out, it was a lot better. It was clear I was going to need to get even further out if I wanted to get more distance. Now, before I started messing with that, though, you see I added on a few hot air balloons 
balloon blocks, and these were just temporary to see how it would do as a plane. This is a good proof of concept here, and I can see that it actually was able to fly. So if I could get a bit more airspeed on this, I should be good to go. One thing I was thinking here was deleting off those braces that I added before and replacing them with suspension. This might seem a little weird, but if I get the suspension to be as weak as possible, as the engine spins up, the suspension will stretch apart, and you can see here I get the blade even further out. This was a huge help, and I can see I was getting up to a much greater speed, but it still just wasn't fast enough to maintain flight. I liked where this was going though, so I deleted off the suspension and I replaced it with sliders. These will move out an entire block, and with these, I should be able to get four extra blocks of movement. This seemed to be working really well, and one strange thing is that the engine seemed to be rotating faster than it ever was before. This is super bizarre, and you can see in this test after leaving it running for a while, it literally tore itself apart. Now I think what's going on here is that Besiege is a little interesting, and if you get a propeller piece up to a great enough speed, instead of acting like a load, it actually starts to generate power and it's spinning up the engine in reverse. Now the result of this is that it actually is able to fly a little bit, but there is a pretty big problem. It also creates a massive amount of torque in one direction, and my plane constantly just wants to spin out. Now I tried adding on some extra fins to maybe counteract this, but no matter what I did, it always just spiraled straight into the ground, I really wasn't even sure if this is going to be able to fit through the rings that I need to beat the competition. And while this engine idea is really cool, later on I started messing around with some gears, and I got a pretty interesting idea. Now here you can see I'm just stacking a bunch of them on top of each other, and I was kind of going for some differential type thing here, but it was something about this movement that gave me an idea to make a really cool VTOL type thing. You can see now I'm putting down a wheel and I put down four steering hinges on it. Now on these, I put down four propeller blades and you can see now if I spin them up with their angle down, it will move me into the air, but I'm also able to pull them back in and start to fall back down. Now this means that just by pulling in a blade, that's going to make me tilt slightly in that direction and if I can control this precisely, I should be able to make a very interesting helicopter. Now I've never actually seen this done before though, so in order to get this to work, I kinda need to just go on my own here. One thing I was thinking to start out with was adding in a couple of ballasts. By doing this, I'll be able to find the exact position of the wheel, and I'll be able to pull in and out the propeller blades wherever I need. I could see this starting to work here, and as I spin around, you can see the propeller blades automatically start to tilt. This wasn't quite perfect though, and it did take a few extra logic gates in order to get this to work fully. Now I also realized having four blades is kind of unnecessary necessary, and I really only need two. I also doubled up the steering hinges, and the reason that I did that is to have one that automatically is doing that tilting, but also I wanted another that I was able to manually tilt out further in order to move up faster. With these in place though, I'm giving it a test now, and it actually does seem to be working. You can see that the propeller blades are slightly tilted more in one direction, and that should mean that I want to go over there. Now I vastly underestimated how complicated this system was to control, and it took a lot of logic gates in order to make sure it didn't accidentally start moving backward. Once I had all this in place though, it did seem to be working, and with this, I wanted to try it out. In order to do that though, I wanted to double this up, and that's that the torque from the first engine is always going to be cancelling out the one from the other. Now once everything was set here, I wanted to give this a test, and you can see now unpinning it, it went into the air pretty easily, but very quickly things seemed to go wrong, and it sort of just shook apart. One thing I had realized is that since these two systems are on separate wheels, they're completely not synced to each other other, and I need a way in order to make them go the same speed. Now at first, I tried doing this with gears, but they're so heavy that it's not really possible to get this into the air. I tried again here by adding on a reaction wheel to automatically tilt me side to side, but even this really didn't seem to help too much, and eventually the propellers were still getting out of sync, and then they would completely shake it apart. Now at this point, I was kind of thinking that I might be able to just get a single propeller up into the air. In order to do this though, I was going to need to add on a lot of reaction wheels in order to stabilize it. That wasn't too hard though, and see now, after moving everything over, I wanted to try giving this a test. And this thing was not very stable, but at the very least, it was staying upright, and you can see now, I'm actually able to move forward, stop, and then start to come back. Now, just this movement means that this thing actually is working, so with all that ready to go here, I wanted to try building up the full plane. Now, of course, part limit was still a pretty big concern, and you can see, I also added in the second propeller again. I was hoping that maybe just for a short flight, I 
be able to have them stay in sync and not cause too much trouble. Now, after bracing those two together, you can see in the back here, I also had on a tail and I wanted to try this out. This was working okay at first, but you can see very quickly, it kind of just falls to the ground and overall, it's not that controllable. Now, I had a very long battle with this plane and I tried adding on longer braces and I tried doing a bunch of stuff in order to get this controllable, but no matter what, it always just seemed to either do a backflip or just go straight into the ground. Now, watch these propellers closely. I can clearly see here that if I try to go left or right, the two propellers are totally out of sync and it's clear that even after just a few seconds, there's no way to keep them on the same page. So finally here, you can see what I did is actually delete off the second propeller and I wanted to try building a plane with just one of these. This wasn't going to be super easy and starting out here, I tried using my reaction wheels from before to keep this stable. With a little difficulty, it wasn't too bad, but I also noticed that there was no way for me to pitch this up or down and therefore there's no way for me to actually move forward or back. Now to hopefully solve that, I added on a couple of reaction wheels to the back here and these should let me to pitch myself up and down and move wherever I want. Once I got this in place here, you can see it is actually working and with this I was able to slowly glide forward. And at this point, I just slowly kept refining the design and adding a second reaction wheel on the bottom, I was able to stay perfectly straight and this was a good start. Now after that, I wanted a little more control when tilting up and down and to do that, I moved my reaction wheel in the back up front and I doubled it up. This gives me twice as much authority and with this you can see here I'm already starting to move around this course pretty well. Now the last thing I need to do is get a system to turn left and right and to do that I moved my angle meters onto the wings. Once I did that I added a couple of steering hinges there as well and as these tilt side to side they rotate the angle meters which makes them think the entire plane is rotating. And with that done I finally have a system to move wherever I want and the last thing I need to do is just some aesthetic changes. Now I went ahead here I colored all my panels and I pushed them in a little bit closer to give it a bit more of a tighter look. Now once I did that, I also gave the whole thing a custom skin and you can see now I get this nice little green and black plane. And with this plane, I'm exactly at 60 blocks, but I ended up doing it here and I beat the full map. But now with my plane done, I want to show you guys the other things people made here and there's some really impressive stuff. Now one of my favorite submissions here is what you see now and this is a flying car. Now it took me a little while to set the keybinds the way I wanted, but this thing is awesome. Now starting out here, you can see me able to drive forward and the way this is powered is using four flying blocks. Now one really cool thing here is once I get off the ground now, you'll notice that the wheels are automatically retracting. This logic is all very fancy and while it did take me a second to actually stay off the ground here, it did do a pretty good job and I was able to control it relatively easily. Now I think one of the smartest things on this is using the spoiler as your pitch control. That just looks awesome and it blends in so well with the rest of the design. This thing was so much fun to fly around and I was definitely burning way too much time just doing that. Now I saw in the submission video here that this thing is able to be landed and the wheels should automatically come out. I wanted to try giving that a test now and while I was having a bit of trouble trying to control myself near the ground, with a little more care I was able to get them to come out and I managed to stay down and actually land it. Now just drifting this thing too is pretty easy and it's also a lot of fun. Now after that, next up we have a bit more of a traditional build here and you can see loading it in, it looks pretty good, but it is missing some textures. After messing around for a little while, I finally got everything loaded here, and you can see this jet fully in action. These controls, once I found out how to use all of them, are very responsive, and I love the way they just move around as I hit the keys. Once I figured out how to use everything though, I gave it a test here, and you can see taking off now, I can drop off that landing gear, and just start flying around. This thing, while it is a little small, is super responsive, and pretty much goes wherever I want, assuming I hit the right keys. Overall though, it actually is really fun to mess with, and I definitely want to try making a larger plane with missiles that works kind of like this one. Now I tried for a little while adding a camera onto the back of this and trying to get some cool shots, but it's so fast the camera's having a lot of trouble keeping up. Now turning on true tracking here, it is doing a little bit better, and honestly this thing is awesome. Now as a quick side note, I'm going to try to get all the links for these builds down in the description below, so if you want to try playing these, make sure to check it out. But if you thought that plane was fast, this next one is way faster. Now it looks pretty good at first here, even though I don't have all the skins loaded in for it, and after taking a little bit to learn off the controls here, you can see I did actually get this off the ground, and man does it just keep going. This thing was going incredibly fast, and the camera had no hope of keeping up. I got up way above 400 meters per second here, and it was still 
relatively stable and keeping itself together. Propellers in this game are known to be a little bit weird, and they can get you up to some crazy speeds like this. Now, just trying to control this thing was incredibly difficult, because I literally just can't think that fast. I almost got it through one of these arches here, but man, I hit the wrong button and just slammed into the ground. And for the final machine here, we have something a little bit different. You can see this isn't really a plate as much as it's literally just a turtle, but the mechanism on it is pretty interesting. You can see here that both the legs actually push down this nice little motion that actually manages to create lift. I was pretty surprised at how well this thing was moving around and also just how fast it moved forward. It was a little uncontrollable, but at the very least, it was able to be moved around. And honestly, this thing was pretty awesome. Now, these were just a few of the submissions we got, so if you want to check out the rest of them, the channels are still open in my Discord server to see what's going on. But otherwise, guys, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below. And otherwise, till next time.